sex work in Trinidad. Abstinence in Jamaica. And human trafficking in Guyana. From across the Caribbean. This is Live Up The Show. Hey everyone, it's great to be here with you once again, Alex. You look amazing. Oh, thank you. You look great yourself. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here and welcome to another Live Up The Show where we share what's been happening in this Caribbean region of ours. Yes, we may be separated by the sea and by our accents and maybe a few other things, but at the end of the day, we are one people. That's right. And when we see ourselves reflected in reports from across the region, we can all learn which are paths to follow and which ones to avoid. Exactly, but you know, Alex, I'm really happy to be part of the Live Up show, thanks to the Maria Holder Memorial Trust, highlighting the social issues of at-risk populations, gender violence and human trafficking. I'm sure that once people are aware of the problem, things will start to change. And once the seed of change is planted, it can only grow and flourish. Talking of being aware, I know Reagan's evening with transgender sex worker Faith opened his eyes to the realities of a life quite different from his own. Last episode, we saw him getting ready, and now he's heading out onto the street. We spent a night with one of QREP's commercial sex workers, and this pretty much entailed dressing the part. Some of us look so believable that you could cry us out as a date to a function. On a typical busy night on the popular junction, Faith not only dressed and made me up, but she also gave me some insight to her upbringing as a Christian. I grew up from a Christian family background where every Sunday you have to go to church. You know, the Lord was always a big part in our life. And even in my life right now, the Lord is still a big part because he's the one who wakes you up in the morning. He's the one who allows me to be the way I am. So. My family have always backed me 100% in anything that I want to do in life. Perception here is that commercial sex work is chosen as a last resort, but faith says otherwise. Because society judges you a lot, you know, as a gay man, you tend to get judged even if you're walking down the street, even if you go into the grocery, you tend to get judged. But as when you look like a female, they really doesn't question you that much. You know, you will get the compliments here and there. You get one or two people saying things about you, but it doesn't phase you as much. <laughs> I really don't find this amusing, huh? I'm just saying. So, <laughs> I don't find this amusing in the least. At night, right, you pick your area. There's girls working different areas. And there's, a, there's girls for certain areas. There's girls who could go in any area and work. At night, customers know exactly what you're doing out there. When they come to you, they know exactly what they're coming for. They'll just tell you, get in their vehicle. This is how much money I have, if you're willing to do the job. If you're not willing to do the job, you step back out of the car. Nobody's putting a gun to your head and say you have to do it. The choice is yours at the end of the day. And if you do choose to have sex when the night comes, you don't have sex. If you don't choose to give blowjobs, you don't do it. If all you choose to do is get to customers and sit down and talk with, or go buy a bar and drink, that's your choice. Wow, this is a very weird feeling. I mean, we've just been out here for like what five minutes mm -hmm. and one car has circled us three times because you are new on the streets and once a car see a new girl they tend to circle to get your attention wow but how do you how do you engage people how do you know that they're here um, for that because they will blow at you or they will stop for you to come to the car you just present yourself go to the car ask them what they want and you don't come out on the street with any sense of fear whatsoever no i think um once you think about fear or think about your life in danger or something or, you know, somebody coming to do me something tonight, it always tends to happen. You understand? You cannot live in fear. You have to always think positive. Wow. Um, I have to say, going out on the street with faith was... It was scary because 
All I could think of was what bad things could happen to me if anyone realized that I was a guy dressed as a girl and, I, and, and, and basically trying to solicit sex. Um, it was surreal. Um, there was this car that passed literally eight or nine times. Literally eight or nine times. Stopped, asked questions, was beeping us. Um, I had so many, so many ideas about what this would entail, but I wasn't prepared for the, the atmosphere of it. It just it feels so different to what I thought. It feels it's fair. I'm always happy when I'm this way, but. You know, when I'm, um, as a boy, it's very difficult for me to deal with people. As a girl, my self-esteem is over my head. But as a boy, it's halfway. I'm Regan Devines for Live Up The Show. You know the phrase, walk a mile in my shoes? That was walk in my high heels. I imagine it will take a little while to really process that experience. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely mm -hmm. will. And you know how Faith said that one of the reasons for choosing sex work was because she enjoys sex. Well, it could lead to an addiction. We have a guest joining us who has done a great deal of research into the subject of sex addiction. That's coming up next. Driving around on a public road fast is a hazard. Drinking and unprotected sex is just another example of careless and irresponsible behavior. I think it's really important for young people to try and actually be engaged in what is smart and what is right for first yourself and then others. That mutual respect needs to be nurtured. So from the surf of love, protect and respect. Live up. Live up. Shout live up. Harvey Holder is a Canadian citizen who was born in Barbados. He is a goldsmith by trade. He's just published his first book on Amazon. The write-up on the site says, Harley Holder is a Caribbean soul who blends his roots with world heartbeats and people's passions. This book reflects his keen sense of the human condition. Harley, welcome to Live Up The Show. Thank you very much, nice to be here. Jewelry making and writing, I don't necessarily see the correlation. Right. You know, what did the two have to do with one another? Were you always a writer? Well, in terms of writing and goldsmithing, there's a lot of research and lots of um, attention to detail. Um, for example, if you're writing a book, you, know, you have to do the characters and character development and the atmosphere, and you have to write all of that. Whereas in goldsmithing, if you're going to make a piece of jewelry, then you have to start from a foundation, basically, and then you build on each um, individual or each piece, I should say. You also wrote about addictions, mm -hmm. which seems to come out of left field as well. Tell us why. Um, when I was um, studying gemology and silversmith, metalsmithing um, at college, um, it was sort of in the 80s, um, and there was this little disease with, you know, a big disease with a little name, as people used to call it. And what happened was you start to see, especially in fashion design and, and designing and stuff, a lot of people who are art, artists um, were getting involved in different aspects of life kind of thing. Is there any particular character in here you'd like to tell us about who maybe is a mouthpiece for our theme, love, protect, respect? Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, there are a couple, but I think Diego, for example, who is a um, uh, homosexual, but he's befriended Joffrey, and um, Joffrey had a, 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 an incident at a nightclub, which really and truly would be something that um, would, could get someone at, in, in, in a position where they're at risk. And um, he was explaining to him um, what, um, what the scenario was and why you should not do such a thing. And uh, I think Joffrey always, uh, I would say Diego always talks to Joffrey about stuff like that. So he's, try he's trying to sort of get that point across, like he doesn't see it as an issue. Um, another character probably, um, it's probably there was a, a lady by the name of Jacqueline and another lady, um, but she was always into body piercings and stuff like that, which was sort of domestic violence, but in a in a different sense. 
Hartley, you've got some hot and heavy content in this novel of yours. I think in subconscious, I say our subconscious, we think a certain way, but we always filter by the time we get to talk to you know sure. the public. And um, I wanted to make sure that this was a, a very raw, sort of earthy um, look, because I think people need to come to terms with that fact that you know if you're an addict. Um, there are things that you do, and this is the way that you see it, and I think we all sort of see it in our subconscious, but I think we need to actually read it and, and sort of get it out there. Hashtag no filter. No filter. <laughs> and I think that's why it's very instructive and very honest and very real and important to talk about these things without judgment, mm -hmm. which is what we try to do on Live Up the Show, right? Mm -hmm. Love, protect, exactly. respect. It, exactly. It's yeah. very easy. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for talking with us. Thank you. Very good much. luck with your book. Thank you. Love, protect, respect. It's a message worth championing in every aspect of life. In this Handel Duncan report, we learn that the Guyana Women Miners Association is making a difference when it comes to human trafficking as well as highlighting the problem that exists in the country. It is the only English-speaking country sitting on the South American continent with a population of just over 700,000. Guyana's capital, Georgetown, is on the coastline. The country earns a significant amount of its gross domestic product GDP from gold mining, a large employment sector located in the country's hinterland regions, a sector predominantly populated with men. It is to these regions, women and girls are often trafficked under the pretext of high-paying domesticated jobs. The scourge of trafficking in persons in Guyana existed for many years, leaving many of the opinion that the government needs to do more to address trafficking in persons. All requests to government officials for interviews on this subject have not been granted. Nevertheless, one newly formed non-governmental organization, NGO, is a champion in the fight against trafficking in persons. Its efforts include, but not limited to, rescuing several girls from remote interior locations within Ghana. The Ghana Women Miners Association President, Simona Brooms. You have to rescue them, you have to deal with the, the person that you're rescuing them from, you have to deal with the people in the location, you have to think about the safety. Um, how quickly you could get out of there. Um, sometimes we um, just creep out back by, by different shortcuts and at night and long journey, sleepless days to get back to the nearest police station. Within the association, there is a trafficking unit. The unit sources its own funds and at times with members using their own personal monies, a rescue mission costing about US $6,000 is embarked upon. It started a journey from Georgetown about 2 a.m. in the morning, um, of course, we will ready ourselves with our coolers and waters and meals and all of that, and heading in some of the most rough waterways and roadways. Once the team is in the field, the unit makes several stops at shops which are usually known for such activities. The ladies are usually educated on their rights. It is so rampant out there. Um, that by the time we get there and start awareness and start to do sensitization, some most of the time we have never get actually to finish um, the distance that we might have want to carry out, because you could always find two, three, four. And um, when I say children, because most of our victims are below age 18. The situation and stories emanating from Ghana regarding trafficking in persons don't paint a good picture. One of the most memorable ones is um, the 14 age that we've had um, at Buruni. And to see these girls, because they were all well tutored in terms of lying about their age. They were well educated about the organization by the uh, trafficker as to what to say and how to really maneuver themselves. But immediately as we got there and even they try to lie, we could have detect because we have our own internal training in the unit. Recognized by the United States government through its State Department for her work in trying to stem the flow of trafficking in persons in Ghana, Mrs. Brooms explains that survivors of trafficking in persons experience some of the most inhumane treatments. We've had one, a 12 year, who was chained in a house and was hidden in a suitcase under a bed. Um, I think um, those were some of the, the harsh ones because they were pretty. She, she was so little that they could have fitted her in a suitcase. She was well full up. 
For the year 2013, the association rescued a record number of 26 women and girls. However, the group has had its fair share of challenges. In terms of funding, we're not being funded. Um, I run the organization. We come together with the women with my own resources. Um, membership um, is paid a year by some of the members, $20,000 a year for membership. And some of the membership, um, they would put funding and we do um, fundraising activity to raise funds. The Combating Trafficking of Persons Act of 2005 prohibits all forms of trafficking and prescribes stringent penalties ranging from three years to life imprisonment, commensurate with rape. But for this champion, that should not be the end of the road. There's no provision, there's no home, there's no mechanism in, in, in structured system um, to deal with, with, with these victims of trafficking in person. So I think that um, we need, we're at a stage that we're still in, in denial, in spite of the evidences out there. And this year, I hope that um, we will start to change these things. I've had a meeting with the Minister of Human Services saying to her, it is not a time to put our heads in the sun, but for us to fight for Guyanese people to bring an end to modern-day slavery in Guyana. Guyana currently stands at tier two on the watch list for trafficking in persons, and according to Ms. Brooms, all must work together in a holistic manner to combat this growing concern. Handel Duncan, HBTV Channel 9 Guyana, for a live up the show. Amazing, Ms. Brooms, powerhouse, right? Yes. 26 amazing. women and girls rescued last year is an amazing start. We could see how difficult and expensive each rescue mission really is. Yes, and as she said, it will take a holistic approach. But at least her association is making a serious effort to change Guyana's status as one of the countries on the United States Tier 2 watch list for trafficking in persons. Exactly. All the countries on that list should be making a big effort. Yeah, really. Next up, we open the archives to bring you excerpts from the Abstinence Mech Sense Tour of Jamaica. Part of living is going out and making good informed decisions. This is the most powerful defense in my mind of our generation. We have a serious problem with AIDS. We have a serious problem with a lot of things that young people are dealing with. But we have to be the one that create the social movement that change it. We have to be the change agent we're looking for. Remember, live up, love, protect, respect. Live up, shout, live up, live up, shout. We keep on talking about an AIDS-free generation and there have been some significant successes, but now is not the time to drop our guard. HIV is still an epidemic and even though the medications have greatly reduced the number of AIDS-related deaths, it's definitely not worth taking chances. Right. As we all know, there are various ways of staying safe. The male and female condoms have gained popularity in recent years and of course, Abstinence is the surefire way of staying safe. Here's a flashback to a group of Jamaican performers who took to the streets to spread the message of abstinence. The underlying message in the popular music is all too often about sexual prowess and embracing a promiscuous lifestyle. Teenage to pregnancy, STIs, including acquired immune deficiency syndrome, have all become part of the landscape of everyday life for many adolescents and Caribbean teenagers. A number of popular artists from Jamaica have been trying to make a difference. Recognizing the fact that adolescents and teens are more likely to be influenced by their peers and music, a number of Jamaican artists are participating in an ongoing school tour themed Abstinence Makes Sense. Hundreds of teenagers greet them at each stop. But is it enough? <laughs> yeah. Why? I thought them all bring a little dance and thing. No, I don't think that they do. 
most of their songs and lyrics talk about their sexual activities and what they do with their female partners. And one entertainer even stated that he wanted to take one of a teenager's virginity, which I think is just not right. Because they're actually promoting it by the song that they sing. So they're influencing teens to have more sex than reducing abstaining from sex. As part of their commitment to the program and the message, the artists bear their soul. High Octane, egged on by friends, had his first sexual encounter while in high school. He was in first form, she in third. First experience, I know not about sex. I want to say, yeah, man, you're boss and everything, man. Yes, you. First, first form, I come to the school and all of them things there. So we just look towards the ratings and everything. They never know who I would have become the end product. So after a while now, I start feeling sick and thing, and I have nobody to turn to but my mother. When I went to the doctor, she said, the hey, doctor said, yeah, but you have gone around. Sex symbol Tifa tried sex at 17. The first time I remember being depressed was after I started having sex. I became so depressed. It was. It was so unexplainable. I cried for no reason. I never used no condom, no nothing, whatever, so I, I was open to anything. When I got saved, I started thinking, I said, boy, them one and two girls, they want me to sleep with, what a thing, me to catch AIDS. And Looking back at their lives, all the artists are thankful that they wised up early. They also feel as artists, they have to clean up their lyrics and provide positive messages. Yo, a prodigal son. I'm mean, gonna put my life on a line for this. I was never, I never do songs before gospel because I was in the gangster lifestyle. So for me, it was more street side, smoke some weed, um, you know, hang out. You have to be the man, you, you run the place, the type of thing. There. The songs I used to listen to, Bounty Killer was my DJ, straight. Bounty Killer was just my DJ. Um, but when I write music, I believe that my children and my grandchildren or anybody across any social strata supposed they can pick up my songs and find something in it. Be a ratting we cut me to the core. Say man a rape virgin to get eight cure with a one ear wall, two, three or four. That's a lie from the Peter L. Don't touch no more. A lot of artists love to sing about having a lot of women. So you have a lot of women more than likely you go broke. Are you going to a position where you're tired or are you going to catch disease? Need help? Well, step into the gym class. Everybody know in. Are you out? Everybody know in. Are you out? Everybody, everybody, everybody know. T-I-F-A. Come on, some people in the ear, Mr. T-F-A. I'm going to have to spell out T-I-F-A. You don't know ever woman ever act on what ever read them. Artists are now um, coming up with new and more creative ideas in terms of their music instead of okay they mega cuss about their song and we know mega get a forward for it you understand instead we're making music that our grandparents can listen to the kids can listen to she need for make R E Ali to check out the B now the boy makes the F A R in a stop leak the hot S T A R but tell him so we can't do P A R for them abstinence truly makes sense can't wait, man. It now run away. It now dry off. It now run. You're now dead. Just hold on and wait till the right time there. When you do want to have sex, when you do want to do the wrong things, it's because you're following other persons, not 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 staying true to yourself. You understand? Are true to your teaching, are true to the values, or the morals that your parents have instilled on you. So that's all I would say. Just be true to you. Just wait. I'm celibate now. From the JNN newsroom, I'm Carol Francis. Music gets the message across every time, boy. It's great to see performers being role models. I mean, I know a lot of them say it's not what they are or they set out to be, but actually it is what they are, isn't it, in the end? Well, we've got another example of a performer giving great advice. This time, it's Haitian and international superstar Wyclef Jean. When it comes to the AIDS issue, it's the entire Caribbean. In our country, some of the initiatives that we are taking is, you know, it's important that people get tested. How do you get tested? Come up with different programs. We used to do like mobile clinics, like hip hop clinics, where, you know, vans traveling through the country, still with medical things in it. And the other alternative is to make sure that you do wrap it up, you know what I mean? You know, we have to get to the realization right now that, you know, there is a problem. And we, as the Caribbean, we have to, Make sure that we inform our children 
It's important. Make sure y'all wrap it up. Together, we can all make the difference. So turn up the message and speak up now. Live up, love, protect, respect. Oh, we have nearly out of time already, Alex. But listen, guys, remember to check the Live Up Facebook page and like us, please. It's easy to join the conversation and we want to hear from you. Absolutely. And there's also the I Live Up campaign YouTube channel. There's plenty to see on there. And we're going to be back next month with a report out of Antigua that gives a man's perspective of gender-based violence. Yes, and we'll get your views on corporate punishment and who's supposed to teach the kids about safe sex. And from Barbados, we take a look at some changing attitudes towards sex work and how safe sex is becoming a priority for sex workers. So until then, always live up. Love, Love protect, protect, respect. This is Live Up, the show. The show! I really slipped on that. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, here, I'm going. I'm trying to stop me. Get out. From across. <laughs> Uh, I was like, it's <laughs> 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 <laughs>